So I'd like to welcome back our audience to our 30th episode now of our Zoom conversations with people who have connections to Margaret Chase Smith of the Margaret Chase Smith Library. And today we have a very special guest coming to us from France, Marie Pomion. Welcome. Thank you. And we first came to know Marie in 2000 when she came to do research. And we'll talk more about that. But first of all, why don't you tell us where you're coming from today? Today? Yes, where are you? I'm in Saint Etienne, France. Okay. I'm at my husband's office because I do my online courses here. Okay. You know, because uni unis are closed, right? Okay. So we do online co courses and it's, it's quite uh, good here, no, no noise, no, not noisy, etc. like at home. Mm -hmm. So I come here and I just finished at 4 p.m. my lessons online. Okay. <laughs> well, one of the reasons for doing this format is because of the pandemic and we've been limited in having people at the library. So we were looking a ways to get content out to people using Zoom. Um, so in, we were closed uh, on March 16th, uh, but probably things were a little more advanced in France. When did you start to close down in France because of the, the pandemic? Uh, we were closed also March 13th, I think. Okay. And then um so we had online courses also we, we were locked we had a lockdown so everything was closed mm -hmm. and then we, uh, i did my courses online till july uh, june july and then we had um, holidays summer holidays but mm -hmm. we were no more locked down right mm -hmm. and then in september we i went back to uni on site right mm -hmm. at uni Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the classes were split into two. Mm -hmm. So one, one week and one week, one, one half of a class, another week, another half. So till November, uh, mm -hmm. yes, November 15th, I think, it, uh, we went online. Unis were closed. Mm -hmm. How many classes are you teaching? Oh my God, um, I've got to i'm part-time right i'm not full-time i've got um, two four eight classes Ooh, that's a lot that's a big load yeah yeah but tutorials you know not not uh, not um lectures right mm -hmm. so they are small groups mm -hmm. how many students are you do you have all together all together so i'm not good at math <laughs> Well, each roughly, group is roughly. each group is 35 30 so 30 by 8 um, 240 yeah that's a lot that's of like, students yeah that's a lot yeah 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 and um so y y in the fall you were able to do some in-person classes but at this point it's all online um, how, how has the online experience been going for you and your students uh, it's we cope let's say we cope but it's not the it's not really really great you know because i can't see them because there are too many on the screen you know yeah. so 30 etc so i see them when they are talking to me when i ask them questions etc they see me and it's quite weird but we are, we've got used to it now because on Till March last year, we started. So we're coping. Say we're coping. <laughs> okay. And uh, what are the classes that you're teaching? Um, I'm teaching. Uh, I'm in the law faculty. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching um, American history, legal, some, uh, some legal things, languages also. Mm -hmm. uh, English, you know, translation and okay. so on. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah. thinking that your your English is very good, 
when did you start <laughs> learn, when did you start studying english oh it's a long story because i come i was born in mauritius the island of mauritius mm -hmm. which is um an ex-british colony okay so we had all our schooling in english you know yeah. i for example my secondary school my high school was named queen elizabeth college <laughs> after queen elizabeth the <laughs> second so we we were we are quite at ease with english you know so and afterwards i went on studying american history in france mm -hmm. so i had to cope with translating you know for example the archives of books etc because so that's that's why i'm quite at ease with english <laughs> Well, it's interesting because as I was listening to you, you know, I was expecting to hear a French accent. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's much more of a, an English tone and quality to your accent. Yeah, yeah, that's why, because we, we, we're just like you, an ex-British colony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're speaking the good Queen's English. Much, much, yeah, standard much, English, yeah. <laughs> much better than we do in the United States. Oh, no, no. Um, so give people an idea of where Mauritius is. Oh my God. Right down in the south, in the Indian Ocean, you know, okay. next to South Africa. We're not far oh, from South that, Africa. That far down. Yeah, and not okay. far from Australia, too. Oh, no kidding. At the same, the same level, you know, South Africa, Australia. Yeah, we're down. I didn't realize that. I thought it was down under. I thought it was more in the, the northern Indian Ocean, but it's very southern. Yeah. Okay. yeah and when did you how when did you leave Mauritius uh, first I left Mauritius to do my further studies in a, in a French um, uh, French department we call it mm -hmm. which is La Réunion which is not far but it is French so mm -hmm. I went there to do my bachelor right mm -hmm. and then I went back to Mauritius to work as a journalist a reporter mm -hmm. And I met my husband in Mauritius, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, which is, who is French. Mm -hmm. So I went back to France and there, and then I, I came to France in 1993. Okay. So I get married and went, uh, went uh, came to France. Mm -hmm. How long were you a journalist? How long were you a journalist? I was a journalist three years only. Okay. And what did you do as a journalist? Uh, um, all kinds of things. I like politics, so okay. uh, for example, political campaigns, etc. Mm -hmm. But we also uh, we I also did uh, articles like on music. You you were you know on women, and it was not I was not really specialized because I, I had only three years experience, so I didn't I didn't specialize in anything. Okay. And what got you interested in American history? Uh, my teacher, I was doing my master, yeah. Uh, so we had to choose a thesis, you know, a master's mm -hmm. thesis, mm -hmm. a topic for my thesis. So I had a teacher and then he, he, he talked about McCarthy and so on in our American history class. So uh, I, I got inter interested in it, and 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 he said, well, "Yes, yeah, good idea." So I got into it uh, since since my masters, and okay. then it was in general it was McCarthyism in general mm -hmm. my masters, and then afterwards um, I I met a, a beautiful teacher, also another. It was a lady then. The first one was a man. <laughs> The second teacher, uni professor, was a lady, and she told me she was specialized in women's studies, okay. so feminism and so on. So she told me, why not? Because the 1950s, you know, it's not a big wave uh, about uh, for feminism. You know about the waves in feminism in mm -hmm. femi feminist mm -hmm. history. Yeah. Uh, so she told me, why not? a new history because i'm sure she told me i'm sure there was something happening in the 1950s amongst women in the united states 
though it's not well studied, it's not well researched. So I did, oh yeah, good idea. That's how I came into it. Mm -hmm. And this is a good moment for me to share a screen and show some photos because in the course of your studies about Senator Joseph McCarthy, you found out about Margaret Chase Smith and came to the Margaret Chase Smith Library to do some research. So this is a photo of you uh, doing research in 2000. What do you remember about that? Oh my God, loads of things. First, first thing I remember is Angie, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just talk well because we we wrote a lot of emails you know it was it was the beginning of the internet mm -hmm. and 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 she replied I, I i did some research and i and i saw that there was this lady margaret chase smith who was uh, uh the only woman senator and uh, 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 congress so so as etc in politics, etc., in the 1950s. So I said, I did some research and I found that there was a library. So a library, uh, I named after her. Mm -hmm. I wrote to NG, right? And she replied, I was shocked <laughs> and surprised. <laughs> and she told me, oh, but why not coming to do some research on site? In, in, in our library yeah. so i said oh good great i'm coming so um and what what was amazing was the archives you know mm -hmm. because the scrapbooks and all the the papers the congress papers congressional papers etc mm -hmm. oh that was very i was amazed by by all this so that was the, the, the archives, yeah, really yeah. the archives. Do you remember the first time you came, how long you were here for? Yeah, I was here for, for two weeks, I think. Okay, very good. So you got to yeah. do a lot of research. And yeah. the next photo is on that same visit, and I'm showing you around the museum. Yeah, the museum, yeah. Oh, great. 20 years ago, doesn't, well, almost coming up on 21 years ago. It doesn't seem like yeah. it's that long ago. Long ago, yeah. <laughs> At this point, um, in 2000, were you working on your master's degree at this point? Yeah, master's degree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was on McCarthyism. It was on McCarthyism, and I did a small, small paragraph on Senator Smith. Okay. And afterwards, in my PhD uh, thesis, I did a, a whole chapter. I wrote a whole chapter on that. <laughs> well, that brings us to the next photo, which is 2009. So you came back yeah. nine years later. And at that yeah. point, are you working on your doctoral dissertation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doctoral thesis. Yeah. Doctoral yeah. thesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. um, what did you have to say about Margaret Chase Smith in your chapter? Uh, so, um, the declaration of conscience, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, because, um, she, anyway, she was the only lady uh, in Congress, Senator, etc. Mm -hmm. And she, she stood against the, the, oh my God, I forgot the name. Um, well, witch hunt, you know, witch hunting yep. mm -hmm. against um, chasing communists, etc. And she faced um, uh, Senator McCarthy. So uh, I, I, I think, I thought then, and I still think that she was very strong, mm -hmm. very clever, mm -hmm. and yeah, very strong to stand, because she was a lady in the 1950s, you know, it was not easy uh, amongst all these men right? Powerful men, right? Mm -hmm. And she stood and she said what she fought in a declaration of conscience. So uh, this is the, the first thing I talked about in my, in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, um, all, all what she did for women in the army, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that also I talked about it. Mm -hmm. and the women uh, women's armed services integration act you know mm -hmm. so she 
she fought for it uh, and I, I, I wrote about all this. Yeah. Very good. And you, out of that, receive your doctoral degree. And this is, yeah. a photo, this is a photo that you must have sent us from 2013. And I was noticing um, that it's from the Sorbonne. Yeah, yeah, the Sorbonne. Yeah, yeah because I, 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 I defended my thesis um, in, a, in a university which is called Paris Assas Panthéon. And mm -hmm. it was coupled with Sorbonne, Paris too. But I, 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 I told, I explained Ange, uh, to Ange that, that, you know, in France, in Paris, you've got, I, I think, 18 universities. Yeah, yes. 18. The first one is Sorbonne, Paris 1, Par mm -hmm. Paris 1. Okay. And then you've got Paris 2, which is Panthéon Assas. Mm -hmm. I was at Panthéon Assas, but I, I was lucky because the year I defended my thesis, Paris Assas and Paris Sorbonne were together. They, they got they got together, right? Okay. So so I got two 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 degrees, two doctoral degrees, one from Paris Panthéon, one from Paris Sorbonne, because oh. they got together and decided to work together. Mm -hmm. It was the only year afterwards they split. Well, very good. <laughs> now year. there's Paris Sorbonne, Paris, Paris Panthéon. Two for the price of one. Yeah, two for the price of one. I was lucky, yeah. So have you been teaching since then? Uh, yes, uh, before defending my PhD uh, thesis, doctoral thesis, I taught at the secondary level uh, in high schools. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then when I defended, when I had my PhD, I, I I went to to teach to university, so uh, mm -hmm. that's from twenty thirteen, yeah, twenty fourteen, yep. yeah. Do you prefer teaching at the university level? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> both is good, but that university level is is it, it's in my you know I can I can defend my ideas because. Uh, we do women's history, we do American history, we mm -hmm. do languages, but I, at a higher level also. So, and we do, I do law also, legal, of some kind of, of legal, legal studies. Mm -hmm. And, and it's much, much more interesting than teaching, you know, high school is good also, but it's better, mm -hmm. university is better. Yeah. What do you like to teach best of all? Best of all are women's studies. <laughs> okay. and, and what do you cover in women's studies? Oh my God, many things. So, for example, uh, we we are, we we just we just studied divorce in the U.S. Okay. And then we saw the legal legal side. You know, what about the women's rights? The the when when you get divorced, etc. Et and some cases case studies, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's. What you, I men prefer. you mentioned divorce in the United States. Did you also yeah. look at it from the European, from the French perspective? Yeah, well? we compare it to France also, okay. what's happening in France and then in the United States also. Yeah. Okay, very good. And you're teaching a U.S. history course right now? No, no, not right now. It's it's legal. It's on the legal side only, okay. you know. Okay. It, it, and I've, I've taught guns, divorce. Um, we're going to do drugs, etc., but okay. not really American history. We compare France and US or UK, mm -hmm. but US mainly US. Yeah. But but you have taught American history in the past. Yeah, in the past, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right. So, um, what about in terms of research? Do you have current research projects? Oh no, you know. Um, I've been on part-time basis till now, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe next year I'm going on full-time and then I have the, the, the opportunity to, to, to do some research. I've been off on part-time because I had my daughter <laughs> to look after, you know, and she had a baccalaureate, you know, the A-level, mm -hmm. uh, the baccalaureate this year. So she's, she's, 
at university right now. Oh. So now my job is over. <laughs> oh. Well, you, so I can do, I can a, do my, yeah. That, well, that's a different teaching uh, job, teaching your, yeah, your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it was, uh, uh, it was some, some, some great work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now at the in, in, in September 2021, fingers crossed, <laughs> maybe I'll be on full time. Then I'll be able to do to do some research, etc. Mm -hmm. And then if I if I choose to be on full time, I'll have to leave Saint Etienne, you know, because mm -hmm. it's uh, you know go because. I must find a university where women's studies are being studied, mm -hmm. etc. And it's not right now in Saint Etienne. So, so now that my daughter is grown up, I can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is your daughter interested in studying? Oh my God, she's doing management. Okay. She's at the school of management, but it is a uni. It's not a private school. Mm -hmm. It's a university, but mm -hmm. they've got a school of management. Very good. And I, I guess I didn't know that part of your life. Do you have other children as well? Yeah, I've got a, a big son mm -hmm. who is 24. And he has a master in law like, like his father. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So your first two students right there. Yeah. yeah, my job is over now. <laughs> it, it, it's, a mother's job is never done. Oh, don't tell me that, please. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Oh. Uh, so, can you tell people where in France Saint Etienne is? Oh, Saint Etienne is just next to Lyon. Okay. I don't know whether people know where Lyon is. Lyon is two, two hours from Paris by train, you know, okay. by the fast train, TGV, yeah. but the uh, train grande vitesse, okay. right? And what, so it's two what, hours direction, from what direction from Paris? South? Uh, we, you must go north. North, okay, so up yeah. here uh, going towards Belgium and Germany then. Oh no, not that, no, but not that. Not that far <laughs> no, north? No, no, not that far, no, 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 no. But it's, it's we, call it, we call it South East is here, but no, we're not in the South, no, no, no. We, we're rather in the East, up, right? Yeah, okay. not, not far from Paris, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and what do you remember about, uh, being in Maine, because as I was going through photos, I actually noticed that you did some field trips because there was at least one photo I saw where, where you were at the coast. So yeah, what were your memories of Maine? Oh, I remember Baraba. Baraba, Bar you Harbor. say it like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. had some good burgers there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you go on your and own then, or did Angie shepherd you around? Yeah. Ah, Angie t t took me around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. No, I couldn't on my own. No. Mm -hmm. And then I remember Stephen King. Okay. Did you? So did oh. you go to his house? Yeah, it was fantastic. Up yeah, in ba Bangor, Maine. Bangor, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then where? What else? I think that was it. We didn't go. Did yeah. you go to Angie's house? Oh yeah, I went there, it was fantastic, and the, with the, these big trees in the yeah. middle of uh, uh, like a forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, she took me to her house, yeah. I, 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 I just, it's fantastic, R really. That's one of my, that's my best, mm, um, I, I don't know how to say it, to put it, meeting, I don't know, uh, in my life, you know, through my studies, yeah, because she has a lot and she's really a fantastic person, yeah. Well, we were very sorry to have her finally retire. I talked her out yeah. of it several times over the years, but um, after she came back from the pandemic, getting us being away from the library, she decided that she had liked being home, so she decided oh. to stay home on a more permanent basis, but yeah, she was here yeah. for 
37 years. Yes, she was lucky to have known uh, Senator Smith. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a she big She told me many, many, many things, anecdotes, etc., about Senator. I, 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 I mentioned uh, Angie in my PhD because I interviewed her <laughs> about Senator Smith, and she told me some good, good sentences. You know, quotes mm -hmm. about the, the senators, etc. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Well, that was the other benefit is that, I mean, she, this historical person that people were coming to study, she had been Senator Smith's personal secretary for 12 years, so she had that personal knowledge. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, that's fantastic because she knew her. She, she, yeah, and she went through uh, archives and so on, the scrapbooks. My God, uh, I had a fantastic time here. Yeah. Well, uh, we're glad to hear that, and we know you did for two reasons. One, because you came back again. You were yeah. here in 2000, you came back again in 2009, so we know you had a good yeah. experience. And I'm pretty sure that, um, and pr maybe the way that Angie was able to coax you over the first time in 2000 is that we have a research fund, the Ada Leak Research Fund, so we are off yeah. to support um, the research trips that researchers yeah, yeah. I think you yeah, probably I think... received one and maybe two of those research grants. Yeah, two, Adalik, yeah, 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 fantastic woman, yeah. I just, I just found out, I found out that she was in the army also, I think a teacher also, mm -hmm. and she knew Senator, Senator Smith also. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm very grateful because it helped a lot because to, for traveling, for house, uh, I was, I, uh, yeah, I went to a motel also. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know whether this gentleman is still alive. He was so lovely. Do you remember which one? Because there's two motels in town that people would either stay up the town motel or oh. the Belmont motel. Belmont, Belmont. All right, so that was run by a man named Ray Hearn. That's it, yeah, Ray Hearn, yeah, yeah. I remember him, he was so lovely, yeah. Yes, he had, actually, I think he had, back in the day, worked in Washington, D.C., and I think he actually might have worked for the CIA. Oh, my God, oh, oh. Uh, So he's yeah. still around, but he sold the motel several years ago, so, to, oh, so he could be he, he's fully still around, retired. Right? Yeah, and I remember Lynette King also. Yes. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, she, whether she's still she here. retired two years ago, so a year before Angie. But as you uh, may remember, she just lives across the street from the library. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw her daughter. Yes. Interview of her daughter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I interviewed Angie uh, when she retired and, and uh, interviewed Lynn's daughter uh, just to week or so ago because she lives in Georgia and we were um, there was an important election down in Georgia so yeah yeah she lives in Georgia yeah, yeah. so what that brings to mind uh, what do you make as someone who has studied American history um, what do you make of what's going on in the United States right now do you have any opinions <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are people in France thinking about what's going on in America? Uh, mm, tough question, you know, because mm, they think they were they were quite sad, you know, to see you know, at the capital, you know, mm -hmm. being being taken over by 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 a crowd like this and so on. It was quite surprising, and we were. People were sad, really, you know? and they were somewhat af afraid also, right? But um, that's it, and they are, they, are, they, are, they are waiting for the new government, what's, what's going to happen, mm -hmm. we don't know, you know, but that's it. But the, the, the recent events were, were really surprising to us, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were surprising to us as well, <laughs> in one way, and, and not surprising in another. I mean, we knew there was a possibility of there, but to actually see that line to be crossed, uh, I think, was surprising to most people. Uh, so, what 
what's the feeling in France now in terms of the pandemic? What, what would you say the state is? Are you at the point where the vaccines are starting to be given? Oh yeah, we are starting vaccines, but very slowly because uh, you know, because we are lots, we, we French people like papers, you know, we're filling many papers, you okay. we must agree, not agree, and so on. So mm -hmm. it's very long, it was very long. Mm -hmm. And because legally, the, the, the secretaries of states, they, 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 they fear that legally they'll be on, on, be, be, on be trouble, you know, be, because they, they, they don't want to go in front of the court and say, ah. so there are many papers to be filled before. And then we started, uh, I think right now, uh, the, P, the, the inhabitants over 75, 75 years old are being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And then uh, quite, mm, for example, in August will be the people around 40, 50, Okay. So it's not it's not very quick, but but we are we are we're trying to cope, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's not easy. Well, we're and in the same situation, just trying to figure out who should get it first, and then how to make that possible. So I think we're at the point where we've decided, yeah, it's the older people who should get it first, rather than essential workers, and then work our way down through the age groups. That's it, the same thing. They say at the end of 2021, everybody would have, would have been vaccinated. I don't know whether it's true or not. We'll see, we don't know. <laughs> so yeah. what about you personally? I mean, have you felt very confined? Have you been able to travel at all or have you pretty much no, been I, on I, for I, a year? I, for no, I, for example, you know, I've got my mom who is still alive in Mauritius. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to go and visit her in August, last August. We couldn't. Mm -hmm. I've got my aunts in England also. We've got people dying, you know, funerals, etc. Mm -hmm. My uncle, for example, we couldn't go because we were locked down and yeah. they too. And no, we've, it's, been, it's been two years now. We've not been traveling, you know. So we're stuck here mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. What's the COVID situation in Mauritius? Oh, it's COVID safe. It's not COVID free. Okay. It was COVID free a few months ago. Oh. Now it's COVID safe because there are some cases, you know, now mm -hmm. they've, mm -hmm. got, they've got some people uh, suffering from the virus. But it's safe. But for example, I think there are a hundred cases, a hundred persons suffering from from it, and it's not really really serious, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're just positive. That's it, and they're coping. But the tragedy is that Mauritius is um, is an island, mm -hmm. and it depends on tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the main main means economy economically they are very suffering a lot because no more tourists yeah. the hotels are closed and there has been many many unemployed people you know have been mm -hmm. unemployment has been rising so it's it's bad it's, it's i've got friends there who are very suffering a lot just like here also you know the restaurants who closed down mm -hmm. the bars the cafes Mm -hmm. and etc and many many people are suffering economically yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's so, like in the u.s i think so with the restaurants i mean one of the things that we're able to do here is that we can we can order out and we can do it yeah with, like, all curbside are you able to do that with your restaurants to, to we to can do bring it home yeah we can do takeaway you know yeah. but the thing is people do take away with the big 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 layer you know like mm, i won't i i can't say the name because i'm going to do some ad to them for them you know just fast foods fast foods but the restaurants you know gastronomy etc mm -hmm. they don't benefit from it no people go to fast foods to take away like uh, more more and more so the restaurants there 
they try to cope, but they can't because people don't order to in mm. their food there. So yeah, it's a pity, but it's like this. <laughs> well, your food ways in France are much different than ours in the United States because isn't another aspect of a lot of your shopping would be like going to markets and, and, and buying yeah. fresh food. Are, are you able to do that? Yeah. Are the markets yeah. open? The markets are open, but um, we are we have curfew as from tomorrow. We have curfew from six a.m. to uh, six p.m. to six a.m. Okay. So people must rush, you know, and go mm -hmm. for, to buy their their food, etc. If you want mm -hmm. to go to the market, it's not easy because you have to work also. Yeah. So, but it's still open. Yeah, yeah. We buy fresh vegetables, fruits, etc. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do it. We are not locked down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to conclude with French gastronomy because oh. <laughs> you, uh, quite remarkably, and you may have been doing this for 20, over 20 years now, every oh. Christmas time, you send the library a box of chocolates, some nice French chocolates. Is there a story behind these chocolates? Yeah, the, the chocolate factory is just. Oh, Across I'm noticing the road. that. I'm noticing it's, that. It says St. Etienne right here. Yeah, it's right across the road. I leave, I okay. see the factory, the shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it's a it's a small factory, you know. It's not it's not big, it's a small it's a family factory, you know. Mm -hmm. So we like it. It's it's tasty, it's not done in dust in big factories, etc. Et so that's why. And what, what's the name of the company? Kulua. Kulua, okay. Kulua. Yeah, C-O-U-L-O-I-S. Yeah, and, that's it. Yes, do you have a favorite chocolate? You can see I've, I've been doing some damage on the- uh, <laughs> I see, I, I probably, can see. I've probably got a third from the head of the way in. Do you have favorite chocolates? I like I like um, raspberry, you know, flavor. Well, and I, you know, the raspberries on the inside. What am, look, what am I looking for on the outside? What shape is it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know the shape. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's always the guessing game from year to year is trying to remember what shape and what color is what flavor. Uh, normally, there's there's a small piece of paper. And, and with the, the flavors, I don't know whether you have it or under, uh, uh, underneath the, bo the box, mm. under. I have to do some I more investigating. I'm just playing the guess. Yeah. I've been playing, <laughs> playing the guessing game so far. Uh, but this is going to be my first opportunity in the, this is the 30th edition to do some on-air eating. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Enjoy. Bon appétit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I've lost um, Angie, so I'm pretty much having to eat the whole box myself, which is <laughs> perfectly fine with me. And you, because you knew Angie retired, you sent yeah. her her own box. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She very had her own box. Yeah. I mean, one thing that we can always count on every Christmas that there'll be a box <laughs> of chocolates from Marie. For two decades now, that yeah, two decades. I said COVID, impressive. not COVID. I said it <laughs> because you know it's shipping overseas. It usually winds up. You know there are the twelve days of Christmas, so you're usually on about the twelfth day of Christmas. Before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is a mm -hmm. very nice way to tap off, tap off the twelve days of Christmas with Epiphany and some French chocolates. From Saint yeah. Mm, now I gotta get through the chocolate before I can. Yeah, approve. It's yeah. good. So the other thing I like to do is because you know with Zoom, people are in these very personal settings, and I've been fascinated by your background. Um, is that like a, a chest behind you, a bureau behind you? Uh, it's my, it's a, it's um, it's a poster of a lawyer. You know, it's my okay. husband's office. So mm -hmm. it's some kind of 
yeah, it's, it, it, it illustrates a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> which, which is what his profession is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And you're teaching legal history. Yeah. <laughs> and your son's a lawyer as well. Not yet. He's got, he's got his master's. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Um, the bar, no. He's not yet gone how, through the bar. How much more time does he have? Oh, my God. At least three to five years, you know. Oh, wow. It's a long haul. Very long. Yeah. yeah. It's very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Marie, I thank you very much for being our first international guest. And again, I thank you very much for the chocolates. Uh, I may be able to keep them going till Easter if I, if I pace myself properly. Okay. okay. And I wish you and your family well through the rest of the pandemic and the rest of your coping with you and your students. And hopefully we will eventually all be able to get back to normal and travel and see people once again. Yeah, I hope to. And thank you, too. I was very, very glad to talk to you. I get emotional. <laughs> well, thank you for reaching out um, via, I think it was via Facebook you got in touch. You had been watching some yeah. of the interviews I did yeah. and said, hey. And that's, you know, that's, there are, I'm a big believer when life gives you lemons, you better figure out how to make lemonade. And there are some positive aspects that are come out of this. And you now think about this. Yeah. We are separated by several thousand miles by what five hours, six six hours in time difference. But here we yeah. are, because of technology, we're able to have mm -hmm. a conversation. I have not seen you in 12 years, but here I am yeah. now able to see you because of technology. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for COVID. <laughs> yeah, thanks for to COVID. Thanks for this big lemon of COVID. We've been able to make lemonade. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I cherish, and this has a lot to do with Angie Stockwell, is oh yeah. You know, she reached out 21 years ago, and here you are still 21 years later with this connection to the library. Yeah, yeah. How she makes it that's amazing. So personal when people come here. It's just not just a research visit. She was always able to make Yes, yes, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ended the well, so. <laughs> yes, it ended with you getting your doctorate. <laughs> that's great, yeah. Very good. Well, you take care and you stay in touch. To you too. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.